Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gaming Sphere of weekly video game editorials, news, and gameplay. So I finally finished Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, which took me roughly 17 to 18-ish streams at roughly 2-3 to three hours per stream, and I've been really looking forward to finally being able to say definitively what my experience was with this game and what I felt I got out of it that I think other non-MMO Final Fantasy gamers who haven't yet played this game could get out of it. Obviously, I can't speak for MMO players who've never played Final Fantasy XIV if they should play it since I'm not a regular MMO player, but I will address that perspective as well for reasons that'll become clear. But the too long didn't watch of it is, should you play this game if you are a Final Fantasy fan and specifically if you're mostly a fan of the mainline single player non-MMO Final Fantasy games and don't usually play MMOs yourself? Short answer, yes, with an if, and long answer, possibly, maybe understandably, no, but with a huge but. However, rather than give you a simple yes or no, you should or shouldn't play this game, or rate it on a scale of one to 10, I think it's actually more useful to address my main big picture takeaways from this game. From the point of view, of a long time Final Fantasy fan who doesn't normally play MMOs and who generally plays the Final Fantasy games more for their story slash characters than its gameplay, but who also really enjoys the gameplay, only I generally enjoy it more once the story, characters, and the lore suck me in. Just so you have a clear sense of where I'm coming from and if those experiences seem to align more with your own. So for example, Say you love Final Fantasy 4 through 6, 7, 8, 9, you love the story, the characters, and lore, you've played the modern games 10 to 15 minus the MMOs 11 and 14 because maybe MMOs just aren't your thing, uh, because there's just something so alien about the format. How do you even approach a game like Final Fantasy 14 from that point of view? And just to be clear, I'm only talking about the A Realm Reborn expansion, which is the first expansion and its post-game content. The patches 2.1 to 2.55, I think. Heaven's Ward, which is the second expansion following it, I'm told is where the story and the overall game really pick up. But before discussing my big picture takeaways from A Realm Reborn, just for some context so you have a sense of how I'm approaching this, my real reason for playing Final Fantasy XIV was actually Final Fantasy XVI, which is the next mainline single-player action RPG in the series, also being developed by the same team as Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XVI's Awakening trailer was what prompted me to start my channel to begin with. I was mainly making editorials and gameplay commentary videos, mostly of Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, and Metroidvania games. Before YouTube, I actually worked as a scriptwriter and as a script reader and a doctor in Hollywood for a number of years. Not a big name, just one of the unnamed grunts, but it gave me deep insight into the mechanics of story, how it works, why it works, how it works differently in movies and TV shows compared to how it works in video games. So as I started making more and more videos on gaming narratives, which is how a game's story is told through the gameplay, mostly Final Fantasy, again, Resident Evil, Nier, Metroidvanias, a lot of my viewers started asking me for my opinion on Final Fantasy XIV's story. I played video games back when I was younger but stopped around 2005 uh, after college due to work and personal obligations. I did keep up with news overall, but I didn't play much again until starting mid last year. So I never played Final Fantasy XIV, but I kind of knew the story behind its development, its initial disaster and its rebirth. But as amazing as a transformation as that was, I wasn't normally an MMO player in general anyway. So I had friends and coworkers who did play those kind of games, but my impression was that it's a fairly hardcore gaming genre that people devote their entire lives to. So I just let it pass. But after seeing the potential of Final Fantasy 16 just based off of the trailer and knowing that it's being helmed by the same team that developed Final Fantasy 14 2.0 and its expansions, I felt I really, really needed to play Final Fantasy 14 before I can get a clear sense 
of how 16 will potentially turn out, at least in terms of its story and aesthetics. I also have the unique position of being a very big Final Fantasy Tactics fan from back in the day and a modern day Nier fan. Final Fantasy VII, which was a big game back in 1997, was a great game in my opinion, but Final Fantasy Tactics was a criminally underrated masterpiece of a video game in terms of its storytelling and its characters. It was very Game of Thrones-like in its sentiment, which people are comparing Final Fantasy XIV to. With its own world built out, its kingdoms and factions and races and so on, and considering the influence that Yasumi Matsuno and Yoko Taro's games have on Yoshida, who is Final Fantasy XIV's producer, it just seemed inevitable that there's going to be something very special about Final Fantasy XVI and hopefully Final Fantasy XIV. Because Final Fantasy Tactics, despite being a single player tactical RPG where you build out your own party, it's a game I could have totally seen being a co-op multiplayer game a la Final Fantasy XIV, albeit one that is very single character driven story-wise a la Ramza. So I genuinely wanted to know one thing. Is Final Fantasy XIV going to be a fun, enjoyable experience for a Final Fantasy fan who grew up on the single player RPG games, but who has also since grown up? Because I'm sure there's a good chunk of you out there that are longtime Final Fantasy fans who have played the games, but you also have now work obligations and personal obligations and probably a family. And MMOs can be a huge time suck, especially once you get deep into the trenches. On top of that, the format is also very different from either the turn-based or the action-based RPG games that you've come to know and love. How immersion in a Final Fantasy game works, at least for me, is that the story and the characters usually hit me first, and only once I really get deeply invested into it that way do I then get deep into the game mechanics. Basically, I want to feel like there's something I care about in the game on a personal level before I really get into the game. So is this going to be a great Final Fantasy game? Is it going to immerse me in its story and its world and its characters enough to make me want to invest even more time into getting into the nitty and gritty of it all? So I went into Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn completely blind, knowing nothing of the game itself. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, really went in with no preconceived notion of it at all. I just knew some really basic gameplay guidelines that were told to me by the general Final Fantasy XIV community, which is a guideline that I also echo now that I've finished A Realm Reborn, and that is just finish, focus on finishing the MSQs first, which are the main scenario quests, the quests that advance the main story gameplay progression, and if you can, try to also do the job class quests along the way. But by all means, just plow through a Realm Reborn and make it a priority to get to Heaven's Ward as quickly as possible. And this is key. I'm the type of Final Fantasy gamer that likes to do side quests as they come up and explore stuff, but at least for a Realm Reborn, that is absolutely not advised, as the expansion will take you forever to get through before you get to the worthwhile bits. So here are the big picture takeaways I got after playing a Realm Reborn. Number one, and this is probably the biggest one, especially if you come from the Final Fantasy camp and ordinarily play the games for the story and the characters and the lore first and the gameplay second. The story and the characters in Final Fantasy XIV and Realm Reborn are subpar for the most part, at least until you get to some of the later parts of the expansion. Be prepared to be generally underwhelmed by the game on this front. If you're used to playing Final Fantasy games in general, despite how focused I was on the MSQ and finishing the MSQs and ignoring just about everything else, this was the one persistent issue that I noticed. In the first, I'd say 35% of the game, roughly levels 1 to 20-ish, before you become a member of the Scions, the story goes completely sideways, where nothing particularly of consequence or meaningful happens. It's basically the world getting itself up and setting itself up and frankly, info dumping a bunch of interesting but seemingly inconsequential story context. Then from 35% to 80%, roughly levels, I'd say 21 to 40, where you embark on hunting down the primals, but before you meet Sid, it's a mixture of somewhat interesting events happening here and there, interspersed with bits and chunks of gameplay that were, I think, utterly inconsequential. And what 
particularly makes it drag is that the overall MSQs have multiple subquests, which are basically a string of fetch quests that you need to do in order to complete the MSQ. Go here, deliver this, talk to this person, fetch that. All of which feels pointless and really drags on for no apparent reason. You go to places and talk to people that you see only once and never talk to again. And what's worse, the MSQs don't always tie together. It's almost like the game is narrating a bunch of individual self-contained mini stories that are sometimes redeemable on their own, but they don't really add to the overall story as to what's going on, why it's going on, or why it matters. But at the 80% mark and onward, I'd say, which is levels 41 through 50, 50. 50 is the level cap for Rumble Born, where you're trying to get your airship operational to fight Garuda and rescue your friends from the Empire, is where I felt the story, characters, and the lore started to matter a lot more, comparatively speaking. There were clear goals, there were clear stakes, clear momentum in achieving those goals, and clear reasons why those stakes mattered. And I say comparatively because there's still a noticeable amount of filler content even then, and I'm told that it actually stays that way into the post Realm Reborn patches until you finally get to Heaven's Ward. Here's the weird thing about this game for those of you who come from the mainline single player Final Fantasy games like I did, which might not be weird if you came to Final Fantasy XIV as an MMO player primarily, but it can be very jarring for someone like me as far as the story and the characters are concerned. There's a main playable character in Final Fantasy XIV, but there's no main story character. You're not playing as Cecil or Cloud or Squall or Zidane, who are the main driving characters in the story, nor are you learning anything about their backstory, their hopes, their dreams, their fears, and what makes them who they are. Your character is the main character driving the gameplay story in 14, but your character is also just a avatar for you, the player. And they observe the gameplay story in a somewhat similar third-party fashion. It's a generic blank slate that you build via a character creator. So your character doesn't talk, your character doesn't have emotions, though they do emote. They don't have a backstory, they don't have an inner story. Your character is a self-insert, which is actually similar to how the early Final Fantasy games 1 to 3 were, but before they hit their story stride with Final Fantasy 4 through 6 and beyond. By the way, for anyone asking or curious as to why I opted to play as a Lalafell Lancer or Dragoon, one was because I wanted to play as a character with a weapon far bigger and pointier than myself. Number two, I heard that Yoshida also prefers to play as one as well, so I was curious to discover the reasons behind that firsthand. And number three, before playing this game, I actually heard that Lollafells, or potatoes as they are affectionately called, were either pure goodness and joy, or pure canonical evil ready to stab you in the kneecaps and laugh at you as you fall. So I opted not to take myself too seriously the first time around, and to be among the noble potatoes of Eorzea with a big spear, awesome DPS attacks, and freakishly beautiful hair. And speaking of which, as you'll see, the appeal of this game's story and its characters is derived purely from its lore, which is honestly really impressive. The lore itself is very expansive, very detailed, to the point where I was impressed that even the cursory one-time NPCs were given names, which probably isn't surprising considering that it's an MMO, but is somewhat surprising for a Final Fantasy game. And clearly, as an MMO, a huge world has been built out to make you feel like, geez, there is so much to see and to do and to experience, and one that promises a lot of things to come. There's even tons of homages to other Final Fantasy games sprinkled throughout the world. Final Fantasy games, I think, are built on some pretty intriguing lore. There's beautiful worlds to explore, there's eccentric characters, stylish cutscenes, adorable little critters and such. And Final Fantasy XIV, is like Final Fantasy lore, gaming lore, on steroids. But I think therein lies the problem, at least for Realm Reborn, and this may just be something that's inherent to the MMO genre. The problem is there's just so much lore that the game tries to deliver up front that the execution can, at least initially, come off as 
clunky and expository in the form of front-loaded dialogue that does little, I think, by ways of engaging and retaining your attention. I lost count of the number of times where the names of people and places were packed into these multiple four-line chunks of dialogue that I quickly forgot who the people were, what the places were, and why they even mattered. So early on, I found myself going from one MSQ to another with a very robotic checkbox mentality, which left little by ways of engagement with the story or the characters. However, later on, during the moments where the game does manage to make those details matter, such as meeting with the Scions of the Seven Dawn, which is this game's version of the Justice League, uh, becoming a member of the Scions, meeting the heads of each city-state, learning who their nemeses were, the overarching nemesis, which is the Empire, why the Empire became their nemesis, that's when it starts to feel like a very potentially promising Final Fantasy story with more charming and relatable characters. From what I gathered of A Realm Reborn story, there was once a war between the people of Eorzea, which is the realm that you're living in, divided into multiple kingdoms, collectively known as the Alliance, and the Garlean Empire, which is, just to keep it simple, the big bad empire, trying to conquer the kingdoms in order to unite them under one rule. They fought in a big battle known as the Battle of Cartano, where Bahamut or Dalamud, the moon, or a meteor came down and decimated both sides. And it was a warrior of light, a hero of light, uh, along with a number of warriors of light that prevented total annihilation. And then for five years, there was a stalemate. So the people and the realms of Eorzea are rebuilding and the Empire is doubling down on its plans to conquer the kingdoms once again. That's basically the in-game story. However, I didn't catch much of that story in-game until far later into the expansion, which means that for most of the first portions of the game, I was actually doing what felt like random stuff for random people with no sense of why I did what I did or why it mattered. However, what's awesome, I think, is that with Heaven's Ward and Stormblood and Shadowbringers and Endwalker in the Horizon, there's an entire series worth of content to reassure you that the overall game will be incredibly good, but only if you're willing to suffer through a bit of an unavoidable slog from the outset. Which really brings me to my next biggest point, which is that Final Fantasy XIV is structured more like a television show, whereas I would say most mainline titled non-MMO Final Fantasy single player games are structured more like really long movies, which are fundamentally two very different experiences. The best analogy that I can give to clarify what playing A Realm Reborn is like coming from the other mainline Final Fantasy games is this. So, Imagine there's a five season TV show out there and it's top notch as a whole. It's won awards, everyone who's watched all five season raves about it for good reason. But the first season is a bit of a grind. It's 45 plus hours long. It's mostly slow until the finale, kind of clunky. And on top of that, it's going to front load a lot of the lore that promises to be important later, but isn't necessarily important now which is just another way of saying it's going to be kind of boring for the most part, but you are required to watch it anyways and pay for the privilege to watch it because without the essential context established in that first season, the following seasons won't make much sense to you. Just like watching season three of a TV show before watching season one. No matter how well written or structured each episode of season three is, lacking the essential context that you would have gotten had you watched season one first, will ultimately diminish its importance. So given all of this, just ask yourself, if you were going into this TV show blind, again, you don't like it, you don't hate it, you have no preconceived notions of it, how likely are you to devote the time to hunkering down and watching this season from start to finish? And how likely are you to recommend it to others in the same boat? And the answer to those two questions pretty much sums up the dilemma I think that Final Fantasy XIV finds itself in with A Realm Reborn. And yes, while I understand that A Realm Reborn's deficits can be glossed over in hindsight considering what comes afterwards, the argument that XIV gets better after A Realm Reborn doesn't change the fact that it's a roadblock. It's a first season tutorial gatekeeper primer expansion to a much greater game, which is why plowing through its MSQ like chaff is absolutely crucial to getting to what the truly good bits are at the tail end. 
contrast this to, say, watching a singular 45 plus hour movie, which is similar to how the mainline Final Fantasy games play out. In a movie, you generally deliver the essential context much faster and you kickstart the story much quicker because you just don't have the luxury of time that TV shows afford. In addition, the single player Final Fantasy games, they play out a lot like individual movies that are part of a bigger verse. So each Final Fantasy game isn't connected to the other story-wise. Final Fantasy VIII's story isn't a sequel or a prequel to Final Fantasy VII. They just inhabit the same verse that's bound by common lore, like chocobos and moogles and common spells, stable characters, weapons, items, sort of like the Marvel verse or the DC verse or the Spider verse, meaning that you can play the games in any order since each game is its own self-contained narrative. Not so with Final Fantasy XIV where each expansion is directly connected to the one that preceded it, story and character-wise. There's positives and negatives to each experience of a movie versus a TV show. The movie is a one-and-done thing that is its own self-contained, complete experience, whereas a TV show is an ongoing saga that you tend to get more invested into as it progresses long-term. I personally prefer 14's approach since I love spanning ongoing story sagas that keep me invested for potentially hundreds of hours but what that does mean, unfortunately, is that the parts of the story that kick off the entire thing, the first mainline scenario, the first season, so to speak, become all that much more crucial because it's the foundation, right? It's the bedrock that the entire game and beyond builds upon. And to be fair, I do realize that Aroma Reborn was a salvage operation from 1.0 and that, yeah, gameplay obviously takes precedence and priority over the story and the character and the lore. I've read up on the team behind it. I admire what Yoshida did, which is what makes me so excited for Final Fantasy 16. It's just that after playing Realm Reborn, I realize and completely understand that what Final Fantasy gamers want from a Final Fantasy game and what MMO players want from an MMO game are often two very separate things, which leads me to my third point, which is that it seems to me where this game struggles to engage you, or me at least, is when there's a disparity between those two things. Before playing Realm Reborn, and even as I was playing it, I couldn't quite tell if this game was a Final Fantasy game first and an MMO game second, or vice versa. Again, I'm not normally an MMO player, so I can only speak second hand, but for example, even just the experience of buying the game, other Final Fantasy mainline games are one-time purchases, but Final Fantasy XIV, like other MMOs, is subscription-based, so you're expected to pay ongoing for the experience. And I'm actually not sure if this was just a thing with Final Fantasy XIV, but even the process of buying the game was cumbersome and confusing. I somehow ended up with two Square Enix accounts, and the Mog Station website, which is where you manage your subscription account, looks like the UI was built back in the 90s. It's such a clunky experience that I think they need to significantly overhaul this ASAP into a sleeker, simpler, more modern interface for a streamlined experience. Gameplay-wise though, one of the biggest differences is in the social aspect of this game, in terms of the shared communal experience that most Final Fantasy gamers also have in common. Other Final Fantasy mainline games are played solo, and the communal aspect of a Final Fantasy game, which is its fan base, is the shared love for the same game that's individually played. But in Final Fantasy XIV, you are playing the literal same game because it's an MMO. In other words, engaging with the community and playing the game are essentially one and the same thing because there's a sense of community that is inherent within the gameplay itself and not just in the aftermath of playing the game, which is a very different experience that can be welcome to some and probably not so appealing to others. The neat thing I've discovered though is that Final Fantasy XIV as an MMO encourages, or at least provides ample grounds for, like-minded people and communities to come together and discover one another and shape a party in a way that just isn't possible with other Final Fantasy games. The game, in a sense, and its community is whatever you want it to be, rather than what the game decides for you what it's supposed to be, if that makes any sense. So my overall impression of A Realm Reborn is that it's very story-focused for an MMO, 
but it's somewhat story and character unfocused for a Final Fantasy game. One thing I noticed that frequently cropped up with many gameplays of WoW veterans trying 14 for the first time was how incredibly story focused it felt in comparison, which is really indicative of just how wildly divergent your impressions of this game will be depending on which camp you originated from, just based on what Asmund Gold, a very prolific WoW and MMO player, has stated in his first impressions video of 14. In WoW, characters will unload literal page-long chunks of dialogue, which is obviously a very unnatural way of speaking. The characters are basically saying what they're saying because the game needs them to say it, and not because it's what the character would normally say. I'm sure that A Realm Reborn's many four-line chunks of expository dialogue seem like tweets by comparison. However, to a Final Fantasy gamer who is normally used to characters talking more like people, relatively speaking, Final Fantasy XIV's dialogue can read like paragraphs taken out of an almanac, so depending on which direction you're coming from fourteen at, the story and the characters can feel like an upgrade or like a downgrade. I'm not sure what story in general is like in MMO games or how significant it is to its players, if at all. And just an aside, to be clear, Video games don't need a story story in the traditional sense to be satisfying. They just need some form of narrative that engages you, even if it's only in the premise or the level design or the enemy design or item lore. Even the simplest games that present nothing more than like a boss to beat or a challenge to overcome, there's at least some basic sense of why this challenge matters to the player. Story and characters could be the most inconsequential thing in the world to WoW or MMO players, but what I do know for sure is that story and characters in general absolutely do matter and play a significant role in Final Fantasy games, which is, again, where I feel 14's potentially unresolved disparity is with what Final Fantasy gamers expect from a Final Fantasy game versus what MMO players expect from an MMO. Character design, however, I will say that 14 is a clear upgrade from most Final Fantasy games. Since Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO, it's very heavily gameplay concept driven, so there's lots of emphasis on really cool weapons, cool armors, glamours, awesome vehicles and mounts, attacks. It has a very everything given to you visually at a glance sort of effect. Whereas in the other mainline Final Fantasy games, yeah, there's definitely the cool character design aspect of it, but more care is generally given to the characterization as characters in an actually fleshed out story. 14 is absolutely more of a Final Fantasy game than an MMO, if for no other reason than what I feel story-wise, character-wise, the game aspires or promises to be in the subsequent expansions, but even as a game, it's not just an MMO with a Final Fantasy skin either. It's a Final Fantasy game in design and in concept that also just happens to be an MMO in its gameplay execution. Because to its credit, I've actually found it to be a very beginner-friendly game for non-MMO players. It's a very play-at-your-own-pace kind of MMO where you never feel like a single death is the be-all and end-all. There are certain MMO conventions that carry over, like the role of tanks and DPSs and healers, but even in the dungeons and the trials and other duties, where knowing your role in the party is crucial to victory, it's not as if, as Asmund Gold says of certain aspects of WoW co-op, the other players spent weeks prepping for a campaign, and one screw-up from an unseasoned player basically earns them the ire of the entire community. Final Fantasy XIV, for the most part, I think, is a very relaxed MMO, and outside of the MSQ, I didn't spend much time leveling up or even farming for gill. In fact, the MSQ, it earns you enough experience and gill to get you through the game comfortably. I've only died a number of times, and half of them were from like really stupid random mistakes as part of the learning curve. The primals, which are the icons or the summons in this game, were a challenge at times, but for the most part, I never felt like I was in any real danger or that the stakes were so high as to be stressful. So. Unlike what I initially thought, it's less accurate to say that 14 A Realm Reborn is a middle ground compromise between a Final Fantasy game and an MMO game, and it's more accurate to say that it's a unique fusion between the two, where the two disparate elements are in a state of constant flux, and one side is perpetually trying to complement the other 
with somewhat mixed, but I would say overall positive results. From everything that I learned of Yoshida and his team and the team that stuck with him, A Realm Reborn, I think, is a perfect reflection of him, or at least his struggles during that period of his career. It's a Final Fantasy game that, like Yoshida in rebuilding Final Fantasy XIV into 2.0, not just asks for your faith, but on some level actually demands your faith, and rightfully so. It's obviously created by someone who really loves Final Fantasy, and also really loves MMOs, which have historically occupied two very different gaming spheres, and he desperately wants to find a way to make both of them harmoniously work somehow, by making it as welcoming as possible to, one, MMO players who have never played a Final Fantasy game before, and Final Fantasy gamers who have never played an MMO before. Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn is very ambitious, no doubt, and yes, no doubt it also stumbles at times, but only because it's so tremendously ambitious in what it wants to be that it tries very hard to give you a lot and promise you a lot, and there is a lot to do in this game that goes far beyond anything that any single player Final Fantasy game could ever provide, and that alone is a very endearing and very redeemable quality for me as a Final Fantasy gamer, enough to forgive its shortcomings to a degree. And I think it mostly comes down to open-mindedness and expectations. 14 can be a very foreign experience if you mostly come from the other mainline Final Fantasy games and aren't normally an MMO player, while also requiring you to put in a lot of time into it before it becomes good enough for you to enjoy. At times, it can really feel like there are just one too many barriers to entry. And you can sort of make that same argument about the real-time action RPG combat of modern Final Fantasy games versus the classic turn-based ATB RPG combat. But that shift is a far less jarring transition than shifting from single-player RPG to MMO. There's a gentler, more reasonable learning curve, and if you're engaged with the story and the characters, that transition becomes all that much easier, which is why as much as I absolutely 1000% recommend any fan of the single player mainline non-MMO Final Fantasy games, casual, hardcore, or otherwise everything in between, to give A Realm Reborn a shot, despite the MMO learning curve, I completely understand if that learning curve makes the game maybe too unappealing to dive into for fans of the mainline non-MMO Final Fantasy titles. I had specific reasons for playing this game that went beyond a polite curiosity, beyond the game really. I really admire the team behind it and I am super excited for what they'll deliver in 16. I think Final Fantasy 16's potential success could be a great bridge to Final Fantasy XIV, and why I also believe that Yoshida is helming the project specifically to begin with, it's my firm belief now that Final Fantasy XVI will attempt to deliver the same grandioseness, the same grandeur that XIV strives for, but in a more self-contained, recognizable, digestible form that most Final Fantasy gamers can dive into, which is a single-player, non-MMO action RPG Final Fantasy game that has a more moderate learning curve to the combat. And then hopefully, that'll draw in those gamers into playing Final Fantasy XIV with the promise of a similarly great and memorable Final Fantasy story and characters. And that'll be fine also. Even if you play Final Fantasy XIV after XVI, I don't think it's ever too late for anyone to get started on A Realm Reborn. No different than, say, starting to watch season one of a TV show that's currently on its fifth season. If anything, the release of Endwalker should give you confidence that 14 overall is going to be a great game in the long run. And I found that the community to be overall very welcoming and positive to gamers, uh, to beginners who are willing to learn. I've poured easily 50 plus something hours into A Realm Reborn and the post A Realm Reborn patches. I'm currently on patch 2.3 at the time of this recording, and I'm still discovering new stuff every day that people in chat point out. And it's frankly why I wanted to document my experience of playing uh, Final Fantasy XIV blind from the get-go, to give any non-MMO Final Fantasy gamer out there a first-hand look 
at what to expect. I will be continuing into Heaven's Ward and will push through as many of the expansions as possible. Before 16 releases, I don't know what to expect. I have been told to expect great things. I just know that Kasutoyu My Hero, who is the main scenario writer for Heaven's Ward, is likely rumored to also be the main scenario writer for 16. So if you are curious how 16 scenario may potentially unfold, there's another great reason to start a Realm Reborn, but I will be paying very close attention specifically to the way that the characters and the story unfold from now on, and I will be making another update video once I finish Heaven's Ward as well. One final note, from what I've deduced of Final Fantasy XIV's story thus far, it is definitely a sociologically driven story. In contrast to the psychologically driven story of most other Final Fantasy games, minus five, Tactics and 12, which pretty much confirms in my mind that 16 will also be a sociologically driven story. I made a video on the difference between sociologically driven Final Fantasy stories versus psychologically driven ones, which I'll link in the description below, so please do check that out. But until then, as always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you find these videos helpful or entertaining, just like if not. And please do also follow me on Twitch to watch me experience Heaven's Ward firsthand, completely blind. I am currently dedicating my entire entire live stream gameplay channel now to Final Fantasy XIV. The schedule again is Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Sundays 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for those of you in the GMT time zones. And with Final Fantasy XIV, specifically, backseating is fully allowed and fully encouraged. So whether you are a Sprout in the same boat as I am, or a God-tier veteran mentor, Come one, come all, and thank you so much to everyone who has recommended this game to me. I haven't felt this excited for the continuing journey of a Final Fantasy game in a very long time.